So, hello, I'm Amy from Mark and Fold. Um, we design and make stationery in a way that's slightly different to what you'll see um, on the high street and in the mass market. I came to set up Mark and Fold via quite a circuitous route and I studied and worked a number of different places. Um, I'm not going to talk about my CV very much, um, but I'm going to kind of dip into some of the ideas that I picked up along the way that influenced what we do now. So I'm going to jump in straight away to a big philosophical idea that kind of underpins a lot of what we do. And that came about from reading Ken Yohara's Designing Design, which I very strongly recommend if you haven't read it. Um, one of the big ideas that he talks about is emptiness as a positive concept. So it's like holding out an empty box and saying, what are you going to put in it? Everybody can think of a different thing. And the infinite possibilities that this empty vessel poses, are very, is it, that's a very powerful, the, the, the concept of this empty vessel is a very powerful thing. So what he did um, in the 90s when he was working with Muji was to create a series of objects that were so neutral that they could mean very, very different things to different people. Everybody could project their aspirations and their personality onto these very kind of blank canvases. So you look at these grey boxes and you, you think, well, where, where would I put that in my house and what would I put in it? Here again, it's the same idea. You've got this vast expanse ahead of you. You could go anywhere. You could do anything. Um, the, the potential of all these possibilities is a really exciting idea. And it's no accident that the ground here is white. So it's clean and pristine. It's waiting for something to happen there. And this idea um, is then related to the blank white page. Just think of all the things you could write, all the things you could draw on those pages. When you start a new sketchbook, this might be the best work you've ever done. In 100 years, when you're dead, it might be exhibited in the Tate. That moment of potential of what you might do is a very exciting idea. And when I came across this, it helped me to understand how I'd always felt about stationery, which was that I'd go and buy a new notebook every time I had a new job or a new project or a new course. And it was this empty vessel and all the things that might go into it that, that excited me and that made me feel optimistic about what lay ahead. Um, and we used that idea when we pitched our diary last Christmas. We asked people, what are your plans? What lies ahead for you in your life in the year ahead? So this becomes an empty vessel for all the life events and the adventures and the, the things that might happen in your life. And that really kind of meant something to people. That really excited people. So evidently, I was into paper. Um, and when I started my MA in graphic design, I was immediately kind of gravitating towards paper and kind of mucking about with it. At this point, I really didn't know what I was doing. And then once I'd read Ken Yahara, I decided to really focus on white paper. So I contacted all the paper companies and asked them all to send me an A4 sheet of every white paper that they had. And by honing in on quite a small range, I started to kind of appreciate the subtleties. So from far away, white paper's white paper. But when you put them together, you start to notice differences in color and texture and weight and these kind of things. And I started to kind of chart them and get a bit geeky about it. Um, and I really played with paper more like it was a lump of clay to be manipulated than a surface onto which you, you print an, an image. So I tore it and folded it and kind of played around with it. And I really got to know all of these different papers. And by the end, I could pick one up and tell you what it was just from, just from feeling it. So the outcome of this project was um, pretty crap, and uh, I wasn't very pleased with it at the time, and that really, really upset me at the time. But looking back, it really wasn't important, because the process was the beginning of what I do now, and um, the way that I was exploring the journey that I went on was, was really what was valuable. And then years later, when I came to develop the first notebooks for Mark and Fold, I knew exactly where I wanted to start. So I had about 10 papers that were worth considering. I wrote to the paper companies again, I got them to send them through, and I gave them to friends who write and draw and use um, inks and charcoal and fountain pens and pencils and got their opinions about what they liked. And that's how we settled on the kind of two or three papers that we now use for, for all of our notebooks. And the approach that I had during that project of just playing with material and just kind of understanding it um, follows through to what we do now. So this is a recent project of Mark and Fold, and um, I knew that this was a lovely paper with a lot of bulk. It's quite sort of pillowy, and if you deboss into it, you get a really satisfying um, impression. 
So we had this design that was a flat exclamation mark, and it was quite a boring shape. So we added the diagonal um, line pattern, and that really kind of emphasized the characteristics of the material and the process that we were using. And it's lovely to stroke, and it's very tactile. I brought some along to show you. And really, material is the first thing that we think about when we design a new product. So we never sit down at a computer and stare at the screen and think, what will we do next? We muck about with materials. And this cloth was something that had been hanging around for a while. And I thought, oh, let's find an excuse to use that for something. So we developed these cloth journals out of that, out of that material. And that brings me nicely on to making. So once I had all these ideas about the profound of white sheets of paper and I had all this knowledge about paper and what you could do with it, I wanted to make some nice things. So I picked up bookbinding along the way. I did various courses and bound hundreds of books over the years. Um, even then, we only make quite simple books in the studio. Um, these are the kind of simple hand-stitched books that we make and you can see they've got their kind of rough edges. And this is them stacked up. So this was a limited edition we did for... Harvey Nichols menswear, so they're very kind of blokey colours and inspired by the clothes that they, that they sell. And that's them when they've been trimmed and they're very satisfying and geometric and crisp. We make some things in the studio, but a lot of the printing and binding goes on elsewhere. But the relationships we have with those people that help us make things are, are extremely important. Um, and I spent months and months phoning people up and getting them to send us through samples and getting them to test out and make kind of mock-ups of some of the things we were trying to do. We pissed a few people off by being really pernickety and really perfectionist. And as soon as we felt they weren't really up for that, we thought, this isn't really going to work. Um, but we found these guys in Scotland who really want to kind of make something nice. And um, we go and visit all the factories and we kind of get to know the people and the sounds and the smells. And it means that when we're working with them and we're speaking to them on the phone, we know what's um, we know who we're speaking to. So probably the most important and challenging aspect of making, which I could talk about all day, is the binding. Um, and this is what we didn't want. This is a magazine binding, which is absolutely right for magazines, which are designed to be read. Um, but for a notebook, you need it to lie flat. So if you can see there, there's a really thick layer of glue. It's a couple of mil thick. And that's been applied hot. So it's like a glue gun. It's really, really tough glue. It's not going to fall apart. But it, it doesn't have any kind of suppleness in the spine. So one of the things we were kind of offered when we started talking to binderies was this, which is called lay flat binding. Um, and what they do is stick all of the pages back to back through the book. And it means that you don't need any glue on the spine because it, it's kind of forming one, one piece by gluing each page to the next. So... Um, it works really well for brochures like this and um, other things where you've got thick pages um, because you've got two sheets of paper stuck together. They each need to be about 100 gram. You end up with a 200 gram minimum sheet. So it's like a, you know, it's like a board book. Little children's books um, are often bound in this way. So it wasn't quite right for what we wanted to do. And we tirelessly spoke to all the binders we could find in the UK, and we got loads of samples made. And some of them were kind of close to what we wanted, but then they kept using this hot glue. So they had a lovely kind of construction, and then the hot glue just made it really stiff. Um, and there are small master book binders who will sit and hand make every single book, but they cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds each, so it wasn't really feasible. And then we found these amazing guys in Holland called Hexpoor, and they love a challenge, and they specialise in exactly what we wanted to do, which is this. And as you can see, I hope I'm not boring you yet with glue and binding. Um, you know, there's air passing down the middle of the spine. The cover and the book block aren't touching. They're not glued together. So it hinges open really beautifully. And then where there is some glue, it's applied cold. It's PVA, like you'd have had at primary school. Um, it's applied cold and then it's allowed to air dry, so it keeps this lovely flexibility. So whenever we're doing kind of bigger books like this, this is what we use. So the last thing I want to talk about is storytelling. And it's, it's important because it's all very well to drive to the north of Scotland and find a printers that you like and do all this geeky research about paper and, and binding and all these kind of things and produce something really lovely. But if you put that notebook on a shelf, next, you know, that £30 notebook on a shelf next to a five-quid notebook, how are people going to know the difference unless you kind of tell them? 
So the first thing we do is we don't put it on the shelf next to the five pound notebook. We're not in any stationery shops. We're sold as a lifestyle object alongside similar lifestyle objects. So you walk into Oliver Spencer, you're looking for a beautifully tailored shirt. It's gonna be made of really good quality material. It's gonna be really well made. If you like that kind of thing, you might like our stationery. Similarly, SCP, you go in looking for a beautiful piece of furniture, you appreciate good design. Well, if you like that kind of thing, you might like our stationery too. We're not, they have a couple of other notebooks, but it's not like they have an expansive range. Um, so that's the kind of backdrop of our story in a way. We then tell the story very literally by writing it out on the belly band, which is attached to everything that we, that we sell. So we tell you it's 120 gram. We tell you what the paper is. We tell you it's made in the Lake District. A lot of this information isn't actually published. Even GF Smith with their big tome, they don't put a lot of this information in there. We have to go and find out. And obviously this tells you exactly what your notebook is made of. But it also tells you that we give a shit and that we've gone to all the trouble of um, choosing all of these materials really carefully and finding out where they're made, and we've, we've put a lot into it. We tell you how many were made, where they were made, when they were made. So the steps back from the thing you're holding in your hand to you know, pulp in a paper mill are not, you know, not very many. And then we support that narrative by numbering the books. So your book is number five of 150 that were made, and a human being has had to sit down and write that number in the book for you. And then we wrap the books. So we use this nice 35 gram paper, which is much nicer than the kind of average gift wrap. Um, all the batching information's on there as well. And I think this is the point where it distinguishes itself from other similar products. And it's such a simple thing, but it adds so much. It's the difference between your friend handing you a birthday present that they've bothered to wrap and handing you a carrier bag with something that's still got the price on it. And when we put these together, we think about it like it's a gift for somebody that, that we kind of care about and we want to make them happy. And I think all of these human touches, all of these hand-finished details are communicated, and when the person at the other end opens this, they, they do feel all of those things. And we hope and believe that when you receive something from us in the post, it feels kind of the opposite of getting something from Amazon. It's so personal, and there's so many human touches and all these different layers. The receipt is nicely designed, it's handwritten, it's put in a little envelope with a paper clip, there's all these little kind of touches. Um, this is my last point. I've raced through everything. Um, probably the most important way that we tell our story from a day, on a day-to-day -day basis is through Instagram. So we have a phone in the studio all day long. We take pictures all the time of everything. Very few of these are staged. They're edited and beautified, but um, they're not staged. They're, they're things that were kind of going on already. And going back to when I was a student and I was kind of worrying too much about outcomes and what people would think of it. I mean, that's even more the case now because there's a lot more at stake. But by sharing our work in progress, it means that we're kind of throwing open the doors and inviting people in um, and everything's kind of a process and it's not a finished thing and do you like it or do you not like it and did we choose the right color? It's kind of a bit more fluid than that. So we'll post a couple of materials lying next to each other that, that look quite nice or a satisfying finish that we see somewhere. Um, and then well, that opens a kind of dialogue with people. So we've built a community of customers and other creatives who kind of chat to us about all of these things. And um, I guess it, it, it's the best way really to tell the story of why our 30 pound notebook is different to that five pound notebook that doesn't really have the same kind of story to tell. <laughs>